All right, how's it going, y'all? Synology has just released release candidate one for Synology DSM-7. So what this means is basically the operating system of DSM-7 is now in a state where it's a quote unquote release candidate. This means that it's more or less at a point where tinkerers and people who want to mess around with it and kind of home users can start to play with it if they really don't have any crucial services. And it's really at a place where they're saying, okay, we're about ready to release it. It is going to be much more stable than the beta. And so if you were one of those people who was just really excited to get into DSM-7, this is about the time where I would say, okay, as long as you've got a good backup and your NAS is not crucial to your entire life, you can start installing DSM-7 release candidate if it's just for your personal uses and you're like, you know what, I know it's a little bit risky, but I really want to get into the new photos and things like that, and I'm okay with those risks. And so that's really what a release candidate is. It is a, hey, this is a build we think we go through. Now everybody file some bugs and we'll go ahead and clean those up before the full release. And so for production users or anybody who's using us as a business or everybody relies on it, I would not recommend updating today. I would not recommend updating even once DSM-7 comes out officially. I would wait a couple of weeks and just make sure everybody else is having a fine time because quite frankly, stuff happens. A beta just does not have enough of a sample size, nor does a release candidate to really be able to be sure that everything is gonna go smoothly. And so for people who crucially rely on these NASAs, I would recommend waiting for at least the first wave of patches come out after DSM-7 comes out full. And that's just because, you know what? There are some nice features in DSM-7, but it's not worth the risk of possibly bricking your NAS. I'm not saying this is gonna happen, but with updates, you just never know. And so in some related news, it also sounds like DSM-7 has a more or less release date of late July. This is purely rumor mill and whatnot, but that is at least giving a rough date for people who have been wondering when DSM-7 is gonna come out. And so I wanna take this video and kind of go over my experience. I just updated the DS1621 Plus that I've been messing around with to DSM-7 release candidate, as well as some of the release notes and what DSM-7 uh, as an update really means for overall NAS usage. So first off, there were a couple of bugs I've heard of, and anytime you're messing with a release candidate or anything like that, it's honestly a good idea to read the forums first. So I personally just read r slash Synology and hear people talk about what issues they had updating to release candidate one. And so from that, I did hear that Plex might not be working perfectly. And so that is just one thing. I would honestly just check through those forums and see if any services you're using are busted before updating. If you're one of those people who really wants to just get starting and mess around with it. All right, and so let's also go over some of the release notes and let's also talk about what DSM-7 of an update is. And so DSM-7, the update is really just an under the hood overhaul where Synology has very clearly rewritten a major portion of the backend of the DSM operating system. Even from using it in the beta version, it was so much faster than DSM-6 ever was. It was absolutely insane how quick everything was. It was almost as responsive as just a regular desktop usage. Whereas in DSM-6, I was used to clicking on something and waiting three seconds for it to load. And that's just how I got used to using DSM. Instead, now it is so much faster and you can really tell that they've done a ton under the hood for tuning. And so they've also done an absolutely massive overhaul on the way SSD caching works in DSM-7. I think they've completely changed the way that it works. You no longer get that graph, as well as the fact that you can add or remove an SSD cache while the volume is online without taking it offline, without having any downtime, which is huge for people I know, because previously it would take about five minutes to add or remove an SSD cache in DSM-6. And so the other thing I've noticed, and Synology has not gotten back to me on this, is they've completely removed the option to quote unquote skip sequential IO that was defaulted on in DSM-6. So what this means is now all writes go to the cache. And so what this means is all reads go to the cache, not just random reads. And so the reason I think that they've done this is the fact that now, instead of using two and a half inch SATA SSDs as an SSD cache, which were actually quite slow compared to a large rate of disks. So if you're reading sequentially from the SSD cache, you probably were reading slower than you would if you were reading from a massive array of disks. But now we've moved on to M.2 NVMe SSD caching, which is absolutely insanely fast in comparison. And so now because even one NVMe SSD can completely outperform a massive array of hard drives in sequential reads, it doesn't make sense to only send the random reads to that drive. Instead, we can now pull everything directly off of that NVMe disk 
at a speed that is much faster than even a large raid pool. And so that's why they've changed it over, but that will have the effect of actually causing a lot more writes on a NVMe SSD cache. And so for most users who are not doing crazy stuff with their NASes, most consumer NVMe drives are going to have a terabytes written per day, way over what the average user is gonna do. And so you're not gonna burn through those NVMe drives, but some specific enterprise users or people who are running a ton of virtual machines in specific manners might actually start burning through NVMe drives a little bit faster with this. Though, in my opinion, I think it's well worth it unless you've got a very specific workflow in which if you're burning through NVMe drives that quickly, you probably do not need them or it's kind of outside the need for a real NAS. And so the other thing, as you can see here, is they've removed the graph that used to be there, that blocks plot that would show, hey, this is how many writes there were. I honestly really never thought it was that useful, so it doesn't matter too much to me. All right, so now let's go over some of the release notes. And so in some ways, it seems like a lot of stuff has been removed from DSM-7. So a few things that definitely will affect some people, and I will be affected by slightly, are the removal of USB devices. Wi-Fi dongles, Bluetooth dongles, 4G dongles, a lot of different things have been removed from being able to be utilized by the USB ports. And so for me, the one that this affects the most is the Wi-Fi dongle. I personally do not use it because I've got everything hardwired. However, I do have a few clients who have specific setups where they want to have the best possible performance directly to one machine, but want to be able to have decent access anywhere else in the house. And so what I've done for them, because they don't have any ethernet cables running to their office with their computer, I've gone ahead and told them just to get a 10 gig connection directly to the NAS from their computer to the NAS. That way they have ultra fast performance on one single device, which is the device they're gonna be using 95% of the time. Then because performance outside of that one computer is not nearly as important, they just wanna be able to access them if they really need it. I have them with a Wi-Fi dongle. That way they get the best of both worlds, but with this, they're not going to be able to do that, which I think is really unfortunate. Another group who's definitely affected are people who have like Zigbee USB dongles who allow them to control the rest of their smart home. This should still work if you wanna pass it into a virtual machine. And personally, if I was running smart home stuff, I would actually really recommend not running it directly through DSM. I would recommend running it through a virtual machine anyway, just for security and just in case anything goes wrong with that, you only have the one affected system rather than your entire NAS. But that is an extra step. And for people who don't have virtual machine manager or don't have enough RAM to run a virtual machine, that really might affect them. Then there's some other simple ones. There's a lot of cleanup here. It's removing support for EXT3. I don't think that matters for most people. They have changed some of the authorization stuff from NTLMv1 to NTLMv2. And so that pretty much only affects a lot of older devices or in some cases, printers, smart TVs, and things like that. So pretty much what I would do is leave that default, see if anything breaks, and then if it does break and there's no way to update to version two of that authorization service, then turn on version one. But this is a security thing, so if you can manage to go off v2 only, it's probably best. Another thing that I thought was interesting and must have been part of that overhaul was they've removed block level SSD caching. And so this is only for people who are using iSCSI, and that's what block level storage is. And it's interesting that they've removed SSD caching from that because it should just work all the same. Then the other thing that's really interesting is this fact that existing SSD caching for block LUNs will still function after the update. I guess if you just remove them, it will no longer be supported. I'm not sure if this is their way of deprecating the service and just saying, okay, it's grandfathered in for now, but in a future update, we're going to completely remove it or if they're actually just having a separate SSD cache service just for this. But if you don't need it, I might actually rebuild your SSD cache after updating to DSM-7, because that way you know you're on whatever the most advanced one is, and that way you don't have anything grandfathered in unnecessarily. I can't verify that that's what's going on, but it's not that hard to do, and I figure it's just best for users who don't need it. They may as well update and get better performance if it does have something like that. They've gone through and changed the URLs that DSM uses for updates and things like that. You can check out this article, it goes over them. That's really only gonna be for really advanced companies probably who have specific firewall allow rules based off of the host name. And so that's really only gonna be for people who have very advanced firewall settings, but it's good that they have that up there for who need it. The other thing that they're doing is they're going through and they've kind of done an overhaul on 
iSCSI and basically set it up as SAN manager for a very specific targeted services. I don't think a lot of just regular users are using this too much. The only real normal use case that I could see most home users want to do this is either maybe messing around with VM backends or possibly if you've got a Steam library and want to be able to run that off of your Synology, though that's still not going to give you great performance. That would be the two uses I could see home users needing. Then I'm going to skip down to Quick Connect is now using SSL certificates, which is huge. So previously you did not have the right SSL certificates using Quick Connect. Now it uses SSL with the Quick Connect host name, which means that it is a lot more secure and you're not going to get those error messages nearly as much as, hey, this internet connection might be stealing your data or something like that. So they're going to go through and basically have your NAS allowed to have a Quick Connect cert for a specific host name, which I think is great. And I'm wondering how they're going to handle that with making sure those certificates expire before that Quick Connect domain goes back into the pool. I think that's very much an edge case. And probably if you change your Quick Connect domain, you probably will not be able to get that same Quick Connect username. It probably won't go back in the pool for another 90 days, 120 days, whatever it is to ensure that whatever Let's Encrypt certificates are out there can completely become invalidated by the time somebody else gets that username. And then the other thing they've done is on some of the J models, they've removed some video conversion options. I'm not sure if this is really a, hey, they're removing this because they want a product segmentation, or it might be something that they found that this is just super poor performance when trying to do this. Video conversion on a J model is very difficult at best, and so I'm not surprised that they're removing that, though it could really affect you, and it could be a reason not to update DSM-7 if you've got one of these units and you need this conversion. All right, and so as you can see, they have removed a lot of features from DSM-6. Now, I go back and forth on this because I do not like it when services are removed, though a lot of these things were deprecated and they're like, we're not gonna be supporting this in future updates, so they properly told you. And so in some senses, I get it. But at the same time, there's a lot of features out there that people might be using where DSM-7 no longer supports them. They do do a good job of, I believe they will support DSM-6 for security patches for quite some time. I did see a thing that after DSM-6 came out, they had DSM-5 still having security patches for about two years afterwards. So that is good that they will do that. Hopefully they will continue that with a DSM-6 after DSM-7 comes out. But there are some specific workflows that might not be supported that you have been using. But I think the reason this has happened I think they've gone through and really rewritten the way that DSM-7 works as opposed to DSM-6 in the back end. And in my experience, the performance really shows. Everything is snappier, everything runs faster. It is just a much more responsive operating system than what I saw in DSM-6. I've also gone through and updated it, and really I've not had much of an issue. This was already running the DSM-7 beta, and so updating to DSM release candidate one was super easy, just went into control panel and updated it. And I saw no issues whatsoever. We also can go into package center and you can see that now almost everything is available here or as a beta. And so that is a huge thing for people who were updated to DSM-7 beta and a lot of services were not available. Now pretty much everything is available. Another thing that's interesting is because Microsoft finally gave XFAT for free, you no longer have to pay to get XFAT access on your DSM. So now with DSM-7, it's free. All right, so overall, I personally am really excited for DSM-7 fully to come out. I think it's a great update. Even though there are some features that are removed, I think that for a lot of people, if you're not using those features, I think it's easily worth the update. The performance is just so much better and it feels a lot more stable, honestly. I've really been impressed by how much of an update and how much they must have done under the hood to really change this. And so for me, I'm really looking forward to it. But for people who really need some of the services that are being discontinued in DSM-7, it's totally fine to go ahead and wait because you hopefully will be getting those security packages down the line. But I would recommend figuring out another solution over time because unless they add in back in, which I don't think is gonna happen, you are eventually going to have to update to DSM-7 once they stop having security updates for DSM-6. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this overview. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And if you want to get early access to all my videos, you can become a channel member. There's a link for that in the description. All right, have a good one. Bye.